Hi everyone. Today I wanted to have a discussion, a high level discussion, about database performance optimization. Um, what, what things can we look at as developers when we're troubleshooting or trying to make a database perform in a better manner? And this is a huge discussion and what I'm going to present to you today are just the key points basically the starting points that I start when I'm evaluating a system, this is where I'll start. But obviously this is a very broad discussion and there are hundreds if not maybe even thousands of other aspects that can be examined and optimized. But for me these are the key ones, the most important ones, and the ones that basically can have the biggest return on your investment. So they can have the biggest impact quickly. So let's just take a look. I have an article that I wrote on the subject. And you'll see I mention a couple key points here. And this is what we're going to go over briefly today. So let's dive in. The first element for me is that access with an access backend is meant to run on a wired LAN. I've said it before. There's no way of getting around it. Access is meant to run on a wired LAN local network. It is not meant to run over the internet, over VPN. It's not meant to be used over shared drives. It's not meant to be used over wireless networks. Okay. Now, some people say, well, I've done it and it works. Well, great for you. But the reality is a lot, and I mean a lot of people are asking questions and forums relating to these various technologies where their databases aren't working and end up with corruption and things like that. So if you've done it, count your blessings. It's great. You shouldn't. And if you are going to choose to do that, be sure to do regular backups. And also you're, you know, you're not using it in the best way with the optimal setup. So therefore you will possibly suffer from performance issues. So that's why I say you want to put all the cards on your side, you want to give yourself the best chance, run it over a wired network. The next thing, persistent connections. Um, a lot of, especially novice developers, don't know what a per persistent connection is. And quite simply, and I have a video on the subject, um, it's just simply at the beginning when you open up your interface, your front end, you should create a connection to the back end that remains open for the entirety of that session. And that will drastically, in some instances, improve performance. I have seen systems have dramatic improvements just by implementing something as simple as a persistent connection. It depends on the network, obviously, but this is one of the big ones that really, really can have a night and day impact on performance on a database. So persistent connections, worth the time to set up. And when I say worth the time, it's a minute of your time to set up. So do it. Then we get into indexing. Well, indexing, uh, we're talking obviously about your table design. It's indexing of fields. And uh, obviously your primary keys, if you're not using auto numbers, um, be sure to index your primary key, that's a bare minimum. But then a lot of people don't realize, well, what else can we optimize and index? Well, basically, if it's a field that you're going to use in queries to filter on and forms and whatnot to filter on, to apply where clauses and having clauses and things like that, well, then you should seriously be considering indexing that field or those fields. Um, this is also the type of thing sometimes when it comes to indexing that you're going to want to weigh the pros and cons. So perhaps this is where you're going to do some testing and evaluation. But rule of thumb, if you use a field to run query and apply where clauses to, so search upon those fields, then you want to apply an index. And that's just a general rule of thumb. Then, of course, you go down to row source, row source, row source. Well, what can we do about row source? It's always a question of trying to reduce the amount of data that you're going to push and pull from your database over the network. So whether it be forms or reports or even basic queries, you want to limit 
your your query, your row source, record source, etc. for combo boxes, list boxes, forms. Or, you only want to bring back the fields and in joins, tables, things like that, that you are actually going to use. If you have a table, let's say a poorly designed system here, but let's say you have a table with 100 fields, but you've got a form only using five of them, well, you don't want to pull the other 95 fields for no reason. You're pulling and pushing data for no reason. So only specify in the row source, record source, in your SQL statement, those fields that you actually are going to use. And the same is true in VBA. When you're using something like um, uh, open record set and you're going to interact with a table in that manner, a query in that manner, you don't want to do a select all. Only retrieve the fields that you are going to use, interact with. So simplify things as much as you can and only push and pull those fields. We get into complex forms. I've come into several systems where you open up a form and basically they've plugged in with subforms and whatnot absolutely every table in the database. So yes, you go on a record, you have access to everything, but the simple reality is these complex forms, most time users aren't looking at all this information. Uh, different users have different spheres of responsibility, and they're only interested in select items, select table data, and they certainly aren't looking at absolutely every piece of the puzzle every single time. So complex forms are going to slow down load times and processing and things like that because now you're re pushing and pulling a huge amount of data, and for no reason in most cases. So simplify those forms. You know, make a form for the secretary, make a form for the engineer, make a form for the uh, manager that only pushes and pulls the information, displays the information that is relevant to them. And, you know, nothing stops you from having buttons that will pop up another form if they truly need to consult something on, on a rare basis, you know. So show them what they need uh, every day. And in the case, those rare cases where they have to look up something else, well, you can still provide that functionality, but it doesn't need to be front and center every single time. And it also reduces the amount of distraction for your users and improves overall user experience, typically. Domain functions. Um, like everything else, you know, you don't want to overdo it with anything. I've taken over forms where the uh, original developer had basically used DLOOKUP to retrieve information uh, about a variety of information. When the same could have been achieved very simply by joining a couple tables and just having those fields directly in the direct uh, record source. Um, so, you know, there is a place and a reason to use things like DLOOKUP, DCOUNT, DMAX, DMIN, all these other aggregate functions. But these are things that should be used sparingly. And you should certainly not be building forms and reports on these functions. Um, you need one or two in a, in a report. It's one thing. But when you go into a report and you see 30, 40 of these all over the place, all over the queries, uh, there's something fundamentally wrong here. And you've got to start evaluating how the, the underlying records have been built up. And this can be an issue with the queries. This can actually be all the way back down to the table normalization, etc. But, you know, be careful, use them sparingly. They tend to be taxing on the system. So you want to reduce to a minimum the use of any domain functions. Obviously, they do have their place, though. Dynamic forms. This has been one that's uh, saved my uh, hide a few times, actually. Um... When we get back to the complex form, the dynamic form goes directly into this. Where if you have a massive form that has all sorts of sub table data in it, so you're using all sorts of sub forms, like I said, most users never need to see all that information. It is just a waste, a waste on the system to push and pull and load and one other way about it besides simplifying the form as much as you can is you can also use, I like to use 
the tab control. And then you have information compartmentalized by tab. Now, using a tab control on its own is not going to be uh, any form of improvement on performance, okay? Just shoving a subform in a tab doesn't do anything to reducing the amount of push and pull that you're doing over the network. However, if you combine that with the dynamic form in which the subforms on tabs don't load when the form is opened and only load when the tab is actually clicked, now you're getting to the point where you're still offering your user all the information but only push and pull when they actually click on that tab. So select to see and use that information. So you set up the, the, the general form, the main form, then it doesn't load the subforms until the user actually clicks on an individual tab to see that specific data, in which case then it loads the subform and does a you know the push and pull for that specific subform but the other tabs remain unloaded. So you're only gonna load punctually the data that is requested at a real time usage. Um, Dynamic Forms is really, really powerful uh, once you understand the basics behind it. Another last element is antivirus. You know, there's different scenarios here and not all antivirus software is created equal. Um, I myself on my computer, I've never really had any major problems with my antivirus impacting database. However, I have had with clients and helping people online seen numerous instances where um, antivirus impacted a database. And I mean impacted significantly. Um, at one point, Kapersky was horribly hard on access databases. Um, so... It may be worth, if you're suffering from major issues, you're having performance issues with your database, it may be worth the test to simply disable your antivirus momentarily to test your database and see if by disabling it, it performs better. And then if you do identify that the antivirus is slowing down things, then you have a decision to make whether you punch a hole through the antivirus, create an exception for access. Um, it's becoming somewhat common practice because there have been some recent issues with uh, things like malware bytes at one point was uh, an issue with access. Like I said, Kapersky at one point was an issue. And sometimes creating an exception for access uh, can drastically improve overall performance and speed things up significantly. So, that's, as a whole, the, the discussion of, you know, different things that I personally recommend as starting points to evaluate when you're trying to make your database perform in an optimal way. Um, I'm going to leave you at the end of my article with one other article in reality. It's a link to an article from back 2007. And I know the title seems a little deceptive and you, well, 2007, you know, we're 2022. Well, let me tell you, the things that are covered here are still as applicable today as they were in back in 20, uh, 2007 and even earlier. So if you've done the optimization and looked at the elements that I've previously discussed and you still want to take things further, this is a really, really good article, well worth the time to go over and just go item by item and see all these other aspects that you can get into. And you can see it's broken down. You see database performance, query performance, form performance. You, you get the idea. So it's really broken down. There's no way you're going to go through this in one sitting. So it's the type of thing where you're just going to decide, okay, let's tackle one aspect perhaps. Um, but it, you see, you know, normalization, primary keys, just, it's pretty obvious, see? So another great source of information. I highly recommend you go over this. At the very least, just to have this in the back of your head as a developer. Um, you know, I hope this helps some of you out there, uh, gives you a bit of insight as to uh, possible areas of improvement. You know, the ultimate goal here is always to make it, a system, a solution, work well for your end users. 
Um, it's nice to have a database, but if it isn't functioning properly, it isn't running smoothly, um, it's going to be an irritant for your users and then they complain and no one's happy at the end of the day. So just going over some very basic points, you can substantially improve the user experience at the end of the day. So keep that in mind when you're doing development or when you're trying to troubleshoot uh, performance issues. Um, I hope this has been informative. You know, leave me comments. I'd love to know uh, what you were aware of, what you weren't were aware of. Are there other aspects that for you as developers you like to uh, concentrate on to improve performance? Like, have I missed something glaring here? Um, so leave me a comment below. Like, subscribe. If you're able to share this video in any way, greatly appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.